Let me tell you a love story. It's from the Bible. Hosea met a young lady. He loved her. And they got married. Can you imagine the joy and the happiness and the thrill? The excitement of Hosea with his with his wife. The wedding and the honeymoon. But it turned into a really sad time. We're going to learn some lessons here about God and his love for us, his love for Israel as well. Hosea loved this woman. They enjoyed, I'm sure, time together, and they had a little child. They named him Jezreel. Had a little girl. Gave her a name. Had another little boy. Named him as well. But then Hosea began to learn some really distressing things. I don't know if he saw it for himself or people told him first. But after a while he found out that she was not being faithful to him. She's going off with another man. Now, how do you think Hosea here felt? Boy, he's angry. I have a friend. It's been years since I've seen him, but his name is Ron. He told me he had two little children. The two little children came to our church, and his wife was going with another man or other men, I'm not sure. And uh, he told me every day after he had breakfast, he'd go out back and vomit it up. He was just so sick at what his wife was doing. He lost a lot of weight. Another guy. He drove home from work a different way one time for no particular reason, but he saw his car in someone else's driveway. He investigated, found out his wife was there making love with another man. He started drinking just became an alcoholic. Terrible thing to have to face. But you see, God tells us this story to teach us some lessons. When we came to Jesus, we believed him, we loved him. It's sort of like a marriage. But then when we go into sin and we forget about the Lord, I'd, be a, I'd feel terrible. I've never had to face this, and I'm so glad with my wife, Vicki. But she hasn't forgotten me, and she hasn't gone after another man. I don't know what I would do if I had to face what Hosea did. And he told his kids, he said, she's your mother. She's not my wife anymore. And he was angry. And as you go through the book of Hosea, you find out, you you, you see what God is saying to his people who have left him. Because when we love the world and we go into sin and we follow those temptations, it's like being a whore. It's like committing adultery. And you'll see that word whore and whoredom often in the prophets, especially in Hosea. In the New Testament, it says, you adulteress, adulteresses, don't you know that the friendship of the world is being an enemy of God? Whoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You see, you come to Jesus and you give him all. You give him yourself. But then when we turn, pull back and go our own selfish way, fall into temptation and sin, 
and love the world and are ashamed of Jesus. Or like a, a woman who leaves her husband and goes after another man or goes after other men. He's torn up inside. His heart is broken. And he's angry. He's jealous. The Bible says God is a jealous God. Well, in the next chapter, I think it's chapter 3, yes, the Lord uh, tells Hosea to go and buy this woman. What? Buy her? Well, you see, sin brought trouble. Sin often brings trouble, always brings trouble. In fact, eventually, sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. And so, can you imagine? She's having fun for a while. But now, finally her sin brings her in such a pitiful condition. Nobody wants her. And so finally, she just becomes a, a, a slave, sold as a slave. Can you imagine? The guy holding her in chains and she's aged. She's dirty. She stinks. Nobody wants her. And they have, an, uh, can you imagine an auction? A slave auction. And here's people watching. And Hosea, at God's instruction, buys her. He bids on her. He gets her. He gets her for just a little bit of money and a little bit of grain. Man. This beautiful woman, now her sin, you've seen how people who live in sin, it ages them, it ruins their health, it hurries up death. And now he buys her for just a, a, a really a cheap price. That's what sin does. It ruins our health, it ruins our reputation, it ruins our peace, it ruins our relationship with God. You see, God said, his ear is not dull of hearing. His hand is not too short to save. He says, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. And so sin does that. It ruins our relationship with God. It, it causes all kinds of tensions with other people. It ruins, lots of times, it ruins, it, 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 it harms our financial situation when we disobey God. Lots of trouble and chastisement comes because of sin. Let me just read you a few verses from Hosea to get the feel of how God felt. He said, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. You see, when we turn away from God's word, it brings all kinds of trouble. He says, because you have ignored the law of your God, I've rejected you. He says, my people have exchanged their glory for something disgraceful. He says, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. You see, when people turn to idols, they turn to something else instead of God. It's like a woman who leaves her husband. Do you think her husband's going to want, is going to share his wife with another man? Two men in the same house with one wife, one bed? It's not going to work. <laughs> Wouldn't work with me. It would work with you. It's not going to work with God either. He said, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim is one of the, is a, one of the names for, it, one of the main tribes in Israel, and sometimes it's used to speak of the, of the whole uh, nation, the northern part of Israel. And he says this. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. You see, she cannot return to her husband as long as she's going with him. Well, you can understand that, guys. Yes, and if we're going to continue in sin, men, ladies, kids, if we're going to continue in sin, our sins, our deeds do not allow us to turn to God. When you turn to God, it means turning from sin. When you turn to God, you turn from sin. When you turn to God, that means turning from sin. That means turning to God. Let me read some more of what God says. You sort of get the feel of how God, the, 
what God is experiencing here when his people turn away from him. God says, then will I go back to my place until they admit their guilt. And they will seek my face in their misery. They will earnestly seek me. Now, here's what happened. They had joy for a while. And then she turns away to other men and He's angry. He will not have her for his wife. And then God instructs him to go and buy her. And he buys her. He says, now you're not going to be for any other man. And I'm not going to be for any other woman. And then finally, there is a happy ending to this true story. Finally, there's going to be love. Love's going to come when... There is no other competition. And finally, when Israel turns back to the Lord, just to the Lord, then he's going to accept them as his people. And when anyone will turn back to the Lord, turn away from their sins, turn away from idols, other things that they put ahead of the Lord, maybe it's money, maybe it's uh, some sinful pleasure, Then they can experience the Lord's blessing and the Lord's favor. And there will come a time on earth when Jesus is going to come back again and he's going to bless the whole world. The curse will be removed from the earth. It will be a time of blessing, physical blessing, over the whole world. And then God and his people will enjoy a time of blessing and love like a couple who were sort of estranged and then they've gotten things right. They've made up. And now they can enjoy each other with no sin, no problem between them. Now, I suspect you've experienced this, and I know I have. I experienced the Lord's love and his favor and his blessing, and then when I sinned, I lost my joy. I was miserable. had a guilty conscience. And maybe I held on to it for a while, and I suppose you did too sometimes. Finally, though, when we confessed our sins, we turned away from our sinful way, trusted the Lord's mercy, trusted his forgiveness. Then, once again, finally, I knew what it was to enjoy the Lord's love and his favor. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. An old evangelist told about how his soul was so happy God had blessed him. He says the sun was shining, the honeysuckle was blooming, the bees were buzzing, everything was so happy. And then he committed a sin. He said the sun stopped shining, honeysuckle stopped blooming, the bees stopped buzzing. I was miserable. Then he confessed his sin once again to the Lord, got it right. He said the honey, honeysuckle began to bloom, the bees were buzzing, the sun was shining. He's so happy once again. And this is a picture of how it is when we have wandered away from the Lord. Sin brings trouble, always does. curses, 
chastening. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens, scourges every son whom he receives. Then when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And once again, we can experience joy and the Lord's love, peace, happiness, and fellowship. Now, let's go back. Is this where you are? Have you just recently come to the Lord? Have you given it all to Jesus? All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I surrender all. Or is this where you are? You knew what it was to come to the Lord and enjoy his blessing, but then some temptations have come and you've gone into sin. Maybe it's a sexual sin. What did Jesus say about <coughs> sexual sins? Well, the word of God and the law of God told about different kinds. Sexual sin, fornication and adultery and homosexual sin and other kinds of perversions. Jesus was even stricter. In Matthew chapter 5, he said, You've heard that it's been said, whoever commits adultery, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. In the Old Testament, they would stone to death the adulterer and the adulteress. But Jesus said, I say to you that whoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now, how serious is that sin? Well, it's so serious, Jesus said, if your eye makes you sin, if it offends you, pull it out and throw it away. Be better to enter into life with only one eye than to keep both eyes and be cast into hell fire. He said, if your hand offends you, cut it off. Be better to enter into life with only one hand than to keep both hands and be cast into hell fire. You see, that's how serious sexual sins are. They require the death penalty. And Jesus went even much, much farther. Uh, it's not just the outward sin, it's the looking and the lusting and the touching with lust. And it's not just being stoned to death, it's being cast into hell fire. Man, we better turn away from those sexual sins. We're tempted, yeah. And just because you're a Christian, just because you're a real Christian, you really mean it, doesn't mean you're not still a male, you're not still a female, and you, you, we still have those temptations. But we deny, the Bible says, uh, deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live godly and righteously and uh, find a good wife who will love you and stay true to you and that will help you. Find a good husband who will stay to you, true to you. Uh, one man, one woman. Other sins, though. Maybe we've been tempted to dishonesty or drugs, or alcohol, or harming our body in other ways, or tobacco, or, or drugs, or, or lots of kinds of sins, anger. We've gone away from God. We've followed the temptations. Let me read you some more of, the, of the, these verses in Hosea to show you how God felt. He said to Israel, he said, your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. That's sort of like someone who, who says they're going to be good, and they say they're going to follow the Lord, but it doesn't last long. It's like the dew on the grass in the morning. It's, it's wet for a couple hours, and then the sun comes out, and pretty soon it's dry. The mist, you see, uh, over the fields. In a while, it's clear. Yeah, he says, your goodness is like the mist that's soon gone, like the dew. Uh, talk and a little bit of trying, but not really trying very hard. You see, if we really get trust in the Lord, there will be some changes, not just for a few hours. He said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. God is not so much concerned about the religious form, and it's not so much about the sacrifices and the, and the outward things. He said, I desire mercy. You see, if we really know Jesus, and we realize what he has done for us, then we'll start being merciful and kind to others. You see, she's gone away from him. She's shamed him. She's hurt him. She's broken his heart. 
She's forsaken her children. She doesn't care what it does to the family. And now she's a mess. She's gone so low. And here Hosea is willing to buy her back. You know what that reminds, <laughs> reminds me of, <clears throat> don't you? Jesus. While we were still sinners. Not while we loved him. While we were still sinners. We were enemies. We were his enemies. Going our own stubborn, disobedient way. He was willing to buy us back. He gave his life. Now, Hosea just had to pay a few pieces of silver and a, little, a few bushels of grain. That's not much to pay for a slave. Uh, Jesus didn't pay just a little price. He couldn't, couldn't pay a bigger price. Uh, uh, we're expensive to him. He, how much did he value us? He gave his own, his own life. A horrible, bloody, shameful death. Jesus, willing to buy us back. Let me read you some more of what the Lord says. He says, in chapter 7, he says, Woe unto them because they've strayed from me. You see, when we go away from the Lord, it's going to bring disaster. It's going to bring woe. He said, I, I long to redeem them, but they speak lies against me. They do not cry to me from their hearts. You see, it's, re it's really common. It's very possible to sing songs of praise to the Lord and songs like you really love the Lord, but it's just words. You've probably heard it. Uh, my family and I go to a lot of churches, and I see a lots of different styles of worship, and I think I see this rather often. Only God knows people's hearts. But it's pretty easy to just say, we love the Lord, and we'd give him everything, and we love him more than life itself. And uh, a lot of times that's just words. And God doesn't appreciate flattery. Uh, he sees our hearts. He says they speak lies to me. He says, I've written to them the, the many things, the great things of my law, but they, they think it's pretty strange what I've commanded them. See, people, if they don't like what God has said, they just disregard it. Um, They've done disgraceful things, he says in Hosea. That reminds me, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Lord says, it's disgraceful if a woman speaks in church. That's the word of God. Now, how do people treat that? Well, often they treat it. <laughs> they think that's pretty strange to talk like that. Yeah, that's exactly what Hosea said. I've given them my law, I've given them my commandments, and they treat it as a strange, they treat it as an alien thing. You see, it's God's word we go by, not what everybody else does, not what seems to be successful. We just do what God says. You see, my job is to go make disciples and to teach them to do all the things the Lord has commanded. Chapter 9, Hosea. He said, do not rejoice, O Israel. You've been unfaithful to your God. You see, if we're living in sin, that's not the time to be rejoicing. That's not, the, that's not the time to stand up in church and, and praise God and pretend you're re really happy and everything's great. He says, don't rejoice if you've been unfaithful. You turn from your sin. Get God's mercy, and then you can rejoice. A lot of people say, you just come to Jesus as you are. Oh, you don't. You turn from your sinful way. There needs to be repentance. Let me read you another one here. Hosea chapter 11. He says, They did not realize that I was one who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. You see, God had done good things for these people to try to lead them back to the right way. But they didn't recognize it came from God. You see, every good thing we ever had, where did it come from? It came from God. And a lot of times we've been un, uh, unmindful of that and we didn't thank him. And God has been doing good things for us to try to win us back. I have a close friend. She's been calling me several times in the past few days. They seem to have such a good marriage. But for some reason, some things have happened, and, and now they don't speak. They don't even stay in the same room. And others in the same house, but in sleeping in different rooms. And he said it's been months since even, they've even sat down in the same room together. I said, see if, you can, see if you can win her back. 
And that's what the Lord's been doing. He's been trying to win us back. You see, the Lord is not at fault. We're at completely at fault. But he's done some good things for us to try to win us back. And even though, even though God's people have left him, and he said, Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. At the same time, he says, a few chapters later, he says, how can I give you up? And he wants to do something. And that's what he's done. He's, he's done what was necessary. He took the punishment, paid the penalty, paid the debt that we owed so that we can come and have life. And now, he said, you must return to your God, maintain love and justice, wait for God always. And then, in chapter 14, he tells them what they need to pray. He tells us what we need to pray. How do you come to the Lord? Here's a prayer, verse 14, chapter 14, verse 1. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have kept you, have been your downfall. He said, take words with you and return to him and say, now here's a prayer. He tells us what to pray. Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. You see, we just have, our problem is our own sinful heart. When we've sinned, it shows what was in our hearts already. And so we pray, take away all iniquity. Lord, would you just, would you just forgive our sins and cleanse us from the, on the inside? And would you heal our backslidings? Have you noticed how easy it is to drift away from the Lord, to backslide? He says, would you heal our backslidings? You know what it is to enjoy the Lord's love and forgiveness and fellowship? And then, do you know what it is to go away from the Lord and pretty soon you're miserable. You thought the sin was going to be fun. You thought it would bring you satisfaction. But it brought trouble. And disgrace and shame. Turmoil. And loss. Loss of family, loss of things. But you see what Jesus has done. He's taken the punishment. He has pursued us. He has sought us. And when we'll turn from our way, we can re freely receive the gift of salvation. We can re freely receive eternal life. And then we can enjoy fellowship with God. We can enjoy his presence. We can enjoy the good things he wants to give us. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore.